When the object is far from the lens, specifically when it's further than the focal point of the lens, the image produced is said to be real because the light rays are actually focusing on the screen. These real images can be formed by lenses on, for example, the screen at the back of our eyes called the retina, which is made up of millions of tiny light-sensitive nerve cells. Real images are also formed by projectors, both in small-scale presentations and at the cinema. Here, we've set up a light globe 35 centimetres from a convex lens, which has a focal length of 30 centimetres. The way the light refracts when it passes through the lens results in an image of the light globe forming on the screen. In this case, the magnified upside-down image is produced on the screen about 2 metres from the lens. Let's examine what's happening with a ray diagram. Our first reference ray of light traveling parallel to the principal axis, refracts so that it passes through the focal point. The second reference ray passes through the exact center of the lens, and so it passes straight through it. If we place a screen where the light rays meet, we'll see an enlarged upside down image of the light globe. Remember, there aren't just two light rays, all the light rays coming from the top of the globe, which pass through the lens, meet up where our two reference rays meet. In fact, the image still forms even if, for example, the first reference ray was blocked, or if it was actually higher than the lens. There is, however, a third reference ray. Any light ray passing through the left side focus refracts so that it ends up traveling parallel to the lens's principal axis. This ray should also meet up with the others, these three reference rays can be used to work out where the lens will produce an image in any circumstance. However, just to show you that it's not just the top of the object from which light rays are coming, let's mark the light globe with three different colors, red near the top, green in the middle, and blue on the bottom. An upside down image appears on the screen with the red, green, and blue light all hitting the screen in a specific location. When the light hits the screen, it reflects off the screen into our eyes and we can see it. We can draw ray diagrams to follow the path of the different colors individually. The red light coming from the red line near the top of the globe all ends up on the screen here. The green light coming from the green line in the middle all ends up here, while the blue light coming from the blue line at the bottom all ends up here. The light coming from any given part of the object ends up at a specific location on the screen, so an image forms. But we don't really have to draw heaps of light rays like we've just done here. Just two reference rays are enough to tell you where the image will appear. And you can use the third reference ray, if you want to, just to check. By the way, if the screen is further back than where it should be, the light still focuses but then it keeps going until it hits the screen. Since by the time the light hits the screen, it is already spread out, you end up with a blurry image. If the screen wasn't there at all, you wouldn't even see an image. The light would just keep going and wouldn't reflect into your eyes. With projectors, whether they're electronic or older style slide projectors, it's not the light globe that we end up seeing on the screen, of course, but rather the image bearing element that is being illuminated by the light globe. For example, this is an old slide photo. Slide photos, or slides, used to be fairly common, but like audio cassettes, video cassettes, floppy disks, and togas, they're not anymore. I took this shot way back in 1989. No one had a digital camera back then. Slides are like see-through plastic photos. If a slide is illuminated from behind, the lens produces a magnified but upside down image on the screen. So here, I've made a simple projector. A real slide projector works in exactly the same way, but uses a much brighter lamp and a mirror to shine light onto the slide.
the light coming from near the top of the slide ends up near the bottom of the screen, and the light coming from near the bottom of the slide ends up near the top of the screen. By the way, the convex lens in a projector is often called the projection lens. Since the image is upside down, the slide actually has to be placed upside down into the projector, and we end up seeing its magnified image the right way up. Older style film projectors use this exact same principle as well. This has been a short excerpt from Shedding Light on Lenses, part of the phenomenal Shedding Light series of programs aimed at high school students studying the topic of light. The video begins with a brief recap on refraction, followed by an introduction to convex and concave lenses. The ability of convex lenses to focus light rays to a focal point is shown, and this ability is demonstrated in projector headlights and by using the sun to set fire to paper. We then take a look at the images produced by convex lenses when the object is close to the lens. Using real life examples and animations, we show students why magnifying glasses, which are convex lenses, produce enlarged, upright images. In the next section, we look at so-called real images. You've just seen an excerpt from this section. We show students how images are produced on a screen and how projectors work, including how modern electronic projectors generate images. We discuss in detail how the eye works, but we focus on, pardon the pun, how the lens of the eye changes shape to allow us to focus on things, whether they're up close or far away. After looking at concave lenses, we explain what long-sightedness and short-sightedness are, and how lenses are used to correct these two vision defects. Bonus feature one takes a fun look at slow motion, time lapse, frame rates, and so on, while bonus feature two, aimed at higher level students, covers the mathematics of image formation. The teacher notes and question sheets can be downloaded from our website at www.liakoseducationalmedia.com.